Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Elated Geek. Today, I am joined by our good friend, Jose. Jose, say hello to the world. Well, hello, world. I believe that's a uh, programmer. Um, yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today, we're going to be talking about video games. Video games of the past, video games of the future, video games of the heart. You know, what a coincidence. <laughs> yes. What, what are you drinking today? Well, uh, I have some water here, uh -huh. but uh, I'm actually wondering what you got over there. I, I've got this Hayes Parker Reserve. This is a cherry-flavored bourbon whiskey. Interesting. I, I Normally, I'm not drinking alcohol on the show. You know what? I just got off work, and it was just a little bit stressful. <laughs> you know, I feel that. You, you know what? Actually, let me let me have a cap full of that. Okay, let's 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 pour you a cap full and see how you how you play. When Lainey and I were doing YouTube, we used to do this segment where we would try out alcohol, but that that doesn't translate very well to an audio only podcast. <laughs> so how's that how's that work for you? I shouldn't have had a sour candy before this. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. So we are freshly freed from the horror show that is. 2020. How do you feel video games were in 2020, my friend? Oh, well, you see, 2020. Oh, man. Jeez. There's so much going on, <laughs> and it's uh, it's a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of a wasteland, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of desolate games. There was some indie development, which was pretty mm -hmm. cool. We saw this, uh, I believe it's called Among Us. That, that thing was pretty cool. Well, the interesting thing about Among Us was that it was a game that's been around for a while. Right. But this year, suddenly it's like, boom, everybody played it. And <laughs> then the devs were like, okay, I guess we got to do something with this. And they started adding all sorts of new maps. They added in a great new feature of um, locational audio. So mm. people within a certain range of you mm. could hear you talking. Oh. And if you were dead, only the dead people could hear you. Right, right, right. Okay. okay. Uh, the proximity chat, yes. Proximity yes. chat. It was so amazing. I, I think really when I, when I look back at 2020, the two games that define the entire year for me were Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal. Both of them came out right at the beginning of the pandemic. Right, mm. which means when you get Doom, Doom Eternal, Eternal right, and it, you, you look at it and you're like, oh crap, everything is horrible around me. The world is falling apart. I am in Doom. <laughs> ah. Well, there's there's a lighter side to it too. Yeah. There's actually a game, uh, I'm not sure if you heard of it, The Outer Worlds. Uh, you know, I think you've told me about this a few mm -hmm. times and it is it seems really interesting because it's more of a, a, a lighter Ray Punkish sort of story. Yes, it's very interesting. It's a basically Fallout New Vegas kind of meets Mass Effect. Really. Okay. It's it's pretty freaking sweet. I dislike how short it is, but you know, sometimes you can't help that. Mm -hmm. It is a great plot, and I have heard, I believe it was a mostly female kind of uh, dev team, which was pretty cool. I, I love that, mm -hmm. because really, when you're looking at how female game developers are treated in the industry, they are oftentimes treated very poorly by their male colleagues they're not given the recognition that they deserve for really big contributions and sometimes abused even what what systems is it available on uh the next gen well i don't know why we've been calling it for next gen so long i guess that's kind of a, like a marketing thing they've inserted yeah. it into your brain mm -hmm. but uh, it's available on xbox uh P playstation and uh computer as well as nintendo switch i actually saw it Ooh. the other day yeah i was that's like wow that's pretty that's cool, cool. Mm -hmm. so Looking forward to 2021, what would you say kind of wraps up 2021 for you in the games that are announced to come out? Well, you see, we've got this game coming out. I'm sure everybody's heard of it already. Back for Blood. Is... Oh, yes, yes. I oh, heard yes. That one. Okay, so we've heard of Left 4 Dead. You mm -hmm. know, we've played that. It's made by the same people. Everybody's ready to play this thing again, you know. If mm -hmm. you played Left 4 Dead as a kid, I know I did for sure. This thing was, who? that's like uh, Galaga for some, you know, people in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh man. Okay. So yes, actually, I have I have played Left 4 Dead. I think I actually still have it on my Steam library. And no, that was not Galaga for me. Um. <laughs> oh well, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes I forget how young I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, how old are you, Jose? Uh, well, I'm actually 23. So consider me pretty old. But there are others who consider me not so old. Yes. Whereas he he's like, oh yeah, these people that are 40 years old, they're so old. And I'm like, dude, I'm 38. <sighs> I actually do remember quite a bit of big things from gaming, believe it or not. Um, when Link to the Past came out, I saw all the previews for that. Wow, that must have been something. I knew when the Super Nintendo came out. I remember, I'm somewhat proud of this, I remember having a Nintendo Power magazine where in their special RPG section, they were talking about this one game where you went around catching monsters and using those monsters to fight other monsters and then there was this group of a mafia like people called team rocket and if you don't know what i'm talking about by this point you probably aren't into the video game discussion at all anyway uh, <laughs> but yes i remember when they were just talking about that from japan yeah i hear it didn't do so well the first bout and then kind of picked up really well in america right it did pick up pretty well in America. I mean, in, in Japan, they actually had a different set of opening games. I think it was red and green, and then in America, we had red and blue. Interesting. And then they were like, wow, this is really popular, and people really like the anime, so why don't we make yellow for, you know, Pikachu? I, I actually own Pokemon Red, Pokemon Gold, Pokemon X. So they have, like, uh, A through Z? N no. No, they, they really don't. And I'd be really mad if they did. Uh, maybe we should just have a I, I explain Pokemon to you episode. <laughs> I mean, I think that could, uh, yeah, that might be cool. Or boring. One of the two. You guys tell us. Uh, le leave a note at share at elatedgeek.com. Okay, so yes, well, we're, we're talking, <laughs> we're, we've been talking about Back for Blood, which is made by the same dev team as Left for Dead, and it kind of has the same genetics in it. It is the same game. It is the same, legitimately just the same game, brand new. It is the same game. It is prettier. It's the same game. If you want to feel Left 4 Dead, if you want to play Left 4 Dead, but mm -hmm. you don't want to look at polygons from 2002, <laughs> then you get on Back for Blood this year. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. That's what you're going to do. Now, I'm seeing that there is on this list of games, because I've got it right in front of me from Game Informer, there is a lot of games that are coming back. Yes, Um uh, 2021 is it's a comeback yeah <laughs> and just to make things even better there are two games that i saw that the actual plot line and main mechanic of these shooter games is that they are games that take place in a time loop so not only do you have all these games that are coming back but then you have games such as death loop which is in a time loop and it's always coming back Ah, yes. Oh, you know what? I saw that. You're a mercenary of some sort or a bounty hunter or something like mm -hmm. that. And you're it's a multiplayer. And so what you're doing is you're trying to kill the other player while they're trying to kill you. And all sorts of crazy things can occur. I've seen the trailer and it's it's pretty much nonsense. But if you're like into <laughs> that, basically you, you want to play uh, something like Assassin's Creed, but guns. And then you're also fighting someone else who is just about as smart as you instead of a computer. Mm -hmm. This might be right up your alley. What I do find interesting from what they're saying is that with all that chaos and insanity that's constantly happening, whenever there's a time loop, you can kind of learn from that time loop mm -hmm. and predict what's about to happen and work around that, which I think is an interesting game mechanic for a shooter. Mm -hmm. I just wish I was good at shooters. I don't think there's much uh, wiggle room there. No, uh, there isn't. But... I'm sure there's certain games where you can practice your aim, and uh, on certain single-player games, say if you want to feel like John Wayne, you could always hit back uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> they have this easy uh, snap-to-aim feature. It's not the problem of aiming for me. It's actually more along the lines of reaction timing, especially when we're dealing with human enemies. One of my favorite games was a game called Killing Floor. You ever heard of this? Oh, I play Killing Floor 2 all the time. Oh, man. I played the original one a lot, and it was my jams, because here you are, you're killing a bunch of enemies, and all of the players are on your side. 
Like, I, I never, I don't have problems with that. <laughs> well, you'd probably like the Call of Duty zombies. I'm not mm -hmm. too much a fan of the new one. I don't really like when they introduce uh, all sorts of special infected. And here I am talking about Back for Blood, which is pretty mm -hmm. much all about special infected. But yeah, exactly. when you throw in the Call of Duty, not to diss Call of Duty. I mean, everybody knows about Call of Duty, obviously. Everybody knows about Call of Duty, yeah. <laughs> but uh, when it comes down to it, the uh, they're kind of hit or miss at this point. So other games that are making a comeback is Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. Oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, I you I've heard that that's the uh, actual starting point of the Assassin's Creed series. When they, uh, <laughs> that would make sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When they first created that thing, I haven't played it myself, but uh, it looks pretty cool. I played the first few minutes of it, and I was like, okay, this is a fun mechanic. Okay. They also have near, not near Automata. But near Replicant, which is the game before it in the series. A prequel. Yeah, it's a prequel. Oh, those but are always great. The, this game had actually already come out a while back. It was a completely separate game. And they're re releasing it, rebuilding it from the ground up I see. to be as pretty as Automata. Okay, okay. I'm not too much on anime games, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> I guess, what is the game that you are the most interested in? Other than. Um, Back for Blood. What other games are you like, oh my gosh, I must have this? Well, what game of course we got at? Back for Blood. I actually do enjoy Hitman. Now, I've played mm -hmm. all the other ones, uh, including like before this console series, you know, where we got have uh, Blood Money. Obviously, Blood Money's your favorite. It's everybody's favorite. It's, it, it's pretty much the best Hitman game uh -huh. from the community, like, ever. So this new game... Which is just called Hitman. All the it's a trilogy now. The mm -hmm. third one hasn't come out yet, but it's actually really great. It doesn't hit on the keys of Blood Money, but this is pretty much like we've we've never got this close since then. <laughs> okay, and it is pretty amazing. Let me tell you, they've introduced like co-op modes and stuff in this part two one. Pretty great. I'm not sure what three is going to hold for us. They've had they have a lot of content coming, and I know uh -huh. that. And well, I am ready. There is also the Halo, of course. Halo Infinite? Yeah. Halo Infinite, yes. Oh my gosh, let me tell you. This thing looks great. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there's some people who watch the trailer and they're like, oh, grug. <laughs> that low poly on the uh, the brute from the uh, E3 showcase. <laughs> okay. And actually, that backlash caused Microsoft to pull the game back until next year because it was actually supposed to come out when the Series X came out. Oh, it was supposed to be a launch title. It was supposed to be a launch title, and then uh, everybody was like, oh, this looks nasty. And <laughs> so Microsoft's like, okay, uh, well, let's hold off on it for a little while, you know. But let, let's take a, a couple more layers of polish on that thing. Yeah. yeah, and then they were also mad about like, uh, oh, they're copying Doom Eternal. Master Chief has a grappling hook now. What, who wants that? And I'm like... Who doesn't want that? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, love grappling hooks. Innovation. So, like, why, why are you going to say no to a change that would just simply make your experience superior? Yeah. So, like, here's what happens. He uh, he can grappling hook all balls and stuff, obviously. But in the demo, he grappling hooks a barrel, explosive barrel. Red barrel means explosive. Yeah. Know, video game knowledge. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he yanks that, and he yanks it over, and he tosses it at that point at a enemy it shoots and it explodes obviously it does a lot yeah. of damage he uh, uses the grappling hook to grab a low tier enemy and mm -hmm. actually throw it at another enemy that seems really interesting and it seems like it's going to be a little bit more open exploration oh yes uh so what they did was the the very first thing once he steps out of the cutscene and the cutscene looks beautiful by the way it's just obvious that the game hasn't been fully rendered with like all the pretty textures that they want yeah. to add 4k or i mean 8k really <laughs> looks pretty nice once he gets out of the ship he opens up the map, and you can see it's pretty expansive. And this is just for that one particular mission mm. that they have basically set up for the demo. Nice. And it was huge. It was um, three objectives. It shows you you're supposed to take out some sort of anti-aircraft devices. And you can see from the zoom out that this thing is pretty much just like... If you've ever played Grand Theft Auto V recently... Mm -hmm. It's pretty much from the LSIA all the way up to the Thunderdome Amphitheater on the hills. Okay, so it's, it's really expansive, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, see, I've played a couple of the Halo games. I haven't played Halo 4. I've played, like, little snippets of 1, 2, and 3. Again, I'm not very good at shooters, specifically when you're talking about multiplayer shooters. Mm -hmm. But I love me some Breath of the Wild. So having Halo Breath of the Wild 
would actually be kind of cool to me. It's, uh, it's especially if you throw in a hook shot because that's the one thing that I miss from Breath of the Wild. I'm like, can I just hook shot up there? Oh, Breath no. of the Wild doesn't let you hook shot like in no, Ocarina it does not. of Time. It does not. Primarily because it would break a lot of stuff. Breath of the Wild is very exploration based, but stamina is a big thing and climbing is a big thing. So if they give you a hook shot early on in the game or anywhere in the game, it would totally destroy that because you just mm, hook shot me up there. Okay, I no <laughs> longer need my stamina. I'm already there. Some concept art said that it was supposed to be in there and they just decided not to. And it <laughs> may be in the next game. Interesting. But this is the same game where they have some sort of like, uh, like he has a, a cell phone, right? A, a tablet. <coughs> yeah, he has a tablet. It, it's called the Sheikah Slate. And yeah, it's got all sorts of magic runes on it. But uh, they they take the place of other more mundane items, bombs. It kind of replaces some of those. The the phone does. Yeah. Or the okay, so this iPad can blow up. It can blow stuff up. It can. You can. He he goes. He holds it up and he goes. And he generates this energy bomb in his hand. Tosses the bomb and goes. Boom! Remotely blows it up. That is that is cool. That is cool. I I can't wait for my phone to do that. I think. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh we also have medium which is some sort of like detective kind of not well not poltergeist but like ghost kind of thing. okay so, so ghost detectives yeah yeah uh, the weirdest thing well not the weirdest thing but the most interesting thing about it is that it's a uh, it's coming out on the series x and stuff like that you are playing as this girl who can travel between dimensions okay of, two two dimensions so you're going back and forth to go to different areas to solve different things like I'm not sure if it's one area for the other place, but she's going back and forth, and the cover art looks really cool, too. A few games I'm kind of looking forward to is a game called Bullet Age, which is kind of, it looks like it's a shoot 'em up with some platforming elements, and it kind of has maybe some Metroidvania-like, but it is two-player, huh. which is very interesting that to does me. That look pretty cool. And there's also a game called Away, the survival series where you play as this sugar glider a little animal that that can fly and climb and all sorts of things not really fly they can glide mm -hmm. but the the whole thing of it is that you are playing a nature documentary interesting i'm, I'm wondering how that plays out like do you have someone like narrating behind you as you're watching your character do things is, is that what's going on? I don't think so. I think it's more along the lines of... You're just watching an animal. Which you're is playing as animals and there's only animals everywhere. But you can also play as other kinds of animals. Like you can play as beetles, lizards, foxes. And from some imagery, you can play as a praying mantis. Oh, know? play as a praying mantis. Well, I hope I'm not male. Yeah, that would, that would, that would end poorly. Yeah. <laughs> you died. Game one. Wait. Oh, now I have Dark Souls feels. You died. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, another game I'm actually excited for called uh -huh. Hood, which Hood. is... Have okay. you ever, you've probably heard of this guy before. His, his name is Robin Hood. Oh, you know, I think you might need to give me a refresher on that one. So Robin Hood is basically this guy who wears a green hat with a red feather. Okay. Yeah, but his name is Robin Hood. I, I don't know who drew that conclusion, but, you know, he's a criminal. He's a thief. It okay. is. It, if you've ever played a game called Payday... Okay. We're, yeah. we're looking at the same thing here. We're looking you're, at payday. Yeah, you're, okay. you're stealing stuff. Okay. Okay. So this guy steals stuff in, in, the, in the folklore, you know, and then he just donates a bunch to charity. So now he's a good guy. Right? That's how it works, I think. Oh, okay. So this is like Grand Theft Auto Donator Edition? <laughs> no, you don't actually have to play as Robin Hood in the uh, game, thankfully. Okay. You can be a full-on bad guy instead of whatever the heck he was doing. I think that's considered anti-hero. Sure, why not? Sherwood Forest. Whatever that is. <laughs> <clears throat> so you play as the uh, a team, actually. It's a cooperative okay. game. And now we'll get into the other part of that, too, soon. It's a cooperative game of up to uh, four players total. That's three of your friends, if you have any friends. I know some people, you know. If not, I'm sure they have a fine match system where you can find yeah. people who may or may not become your friends down the line. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this is that while playing the game, you know, you are going after set scores. It's uh, between, like, bounties, which is like killing somebody, 
or stealing something like a crystal or gems, okay. whatever, what have you, you're actually competing against another active team. So okay. while it is not been stated that you can like go cross your own teammates, kind of be like a traitor against your own guys, you can fight other teams actively who are actively attempting to steal or do the same things that you gotcha. are doing. So you're going again. Your your team of four is going against at least another team of four. See, uh, that's that's a different kind of competitive play that I'm appreciative of. It's very interesting. You're not actually going out to kill each other immediately, and there are different ways of stopping your enemies besides killing them. It's medieval, so you can close the gates, you can cut yeah. some, some want rope or whatever. It's it's pretty cool. Alert the guard. Alert the guard. Actually, yeah, you can. Uh, in one scene, they show them basically setting off some sort of trap to like. Like noisemakers, okay. really, and it, it actually brings some people over there, and they're like, hey, what are you guys doing? Because they saw the other team picking a lock. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and that's that's pretty, that'll get you. Very cool. That actually seems really fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'd and, be very difficult, but it'd be fun. It actually looks really good, too. I'm, I'm, I do enjoy when games look pretty. I think most of us do. Yeah. I know yeah. I kind of sound like a PC guy when I say that, but <laughs> I own a laptop, so free range. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's three games that we kind of have to have a little bit of a talk about, but not much. One is is a game that is coming out this year called I Am Jesus. I actually have not heard of this. So this is somebody who who really believes more that video games are a, an art form. And he decided that he was going to make a game where you are playing as Jesus Christ through the life of Jesus Christ. And, th- and that's... That's legal? Yes, that's that's totally legal. Oh, okay. All right. Why would it not be legal? I meant morally. More okay. Is it morally right? So basically what he's what he's attempting to do with this is kind of give you the feel for those times and tell the story of Christ. So it's a lot like mm-hmm. the Jesus movie as a video game. Passion of the Christ. You know? Before the Passion of the Christ, there was another one, the the, the Jesus film. Oh, it's called the Jesus film. It's called the Jesus film. Ah. And it's the story of Jesus Christ from beginning to end. And depending on your faith, your belief, um, Jesus' story has not yet ended. So <laughs> Yes, oh yes. From, from the beginning and the end of what we have written down in uh, the bubble. It, it's interesting, he has not revealed any of the gameplay yet. But he said one of his greatest challenges was figuring out how to mechanically make it so you could control the miracles that Jesus did. And what demons look like, because he does cast out demons during the story so you're going to have to cast out demons what do these demons actually look like as opposed to the typical mythological version of demons i'm not sure if i'm going to pick this game up but i want to see what it looks like when it's done because its actual footage does not look all that promising well i'll let you know personally i wouldn't spend money on this but i'd try it you know free is free uh, if and, it's free, and, and, then yeah, sure. Why you know, not? the thing about it is that I'm pretty sure Jesus, you know, as a person, probably believed in free. Not that he's a communist, but or maybe he is. You know, I, I'm not sure of the guy's feelings, but so another game that I thought might be worth talking about is Balsa Model Flight Simulator. How excited are you for this game? Oh my gosh! So once again. Um, it is a real game, right? Like, this is a real game. It's a real game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so run me through what a balsa is. Okay. So balsa wood is a very, very, very lightweight wood mm-hmm. that breaks as soon as you look at it. But because it's so lightweight, if you make a model airplane out of it, right? it, 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 it glides. It glides pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, so, it's basically like the natural wood version of of styrofoam i'm looking at the landscape here and i see kind of like uh i'm getting brazilian vibes yeah Lots of nice mountains and lush green forest yeah and i'm uh wondering the how the paper airplane game video game will fare well if i get to choose like maps or whatnot I, yeah not. like I, I would probably want to get up on top of a mountain and throw it that way because it looks like the the things that you're doing is you'd probably be building the and balsa then, wood airplane and then you're throwing it this is kind of along the lines of like kerbal space program well they're not really monkeys they're like green people i don't, I okay. don't know what yeah but you have you played kerbal space program? i don't think i have oh my goodness okay so this is an ancient game 
Well, ancient. <laughs> uh, yes. My age is I, I get you. I Anyways, get you. the game itself, you play as NASA for green people. Okay. And you're building, and this thing is like true to scale and life-like. Okay. So you actually have to worry about wind resistance, how uh, fuselage. Yeah. You have to worry about how much fuel is in your. It, there's a lot of things going on in here. You, you have and, to do the maths. Yes, you actually have to. It, there's formulas and everything. Mm -hmm. You have prefabs that you can use. You can test your rocket, see how far it goes into space, and the thing actually sets up a map to allow you to know how far your ship or craft, whatever you choose to make, because you don't have to just make a ship. You can make planes. You can make whatever okay. you want. And it goes through the map, and it's kind of like that thing on Smash Bros. where you like hit the little pillowcase and you see how far it goes. It's okay. Like that. Yeah, you can see it actually past planets, and then you can also see if your green guy survives the trip. Because uh, that's important. To, yeah, you have to worry about G-force and things like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, you also have to figure out how's he going to get back. If not, he just he just dies out there. But yeah, you can uh, you can actually plan for a safe trip home or you like can just slingshot not. home can, or just yeah. be like okay have a nice time out there yeah. call me sometime send me a postcard yeah you can be either way you know you know i just want to see how far i can go or you can be like okay i actually want to plan and i want to think about this i want to create a complete trip to space and back yeah meanwhile uh paper airplane video game comes out this year so that i mean i'm sure that'll knock out whatever they got going on yeah i'm thinking that, yeah you're right this probably is going to factor in a lot of wind resistance and uh, other environmental effects into flying a paper airplane <laughs> i'm wondering if i'm in the snow or whatever you know like you know how snow kind of like i mean it's water right and, yeah or, or just even rain you know i'm in the rain with my paper airplane you know that's, that's probably going to affect things yeah yeah i know I, i'm thinking of how cool it'll affect things like if i can just Watch the paper airplane deteriorate midair. <laughs> so, can can I ask you? Have you ever played Flight Simulator? I have not, but I have heard the memes about going to Brazil. So, Flight Simulator is a very old series. It has been around pretty much as long as computers could do graphics. I see. And they just keep on making new ones, and it's always for PC. And it's somehow I think it's always I think it's a Microsoft product. It is, you choose a, a real existing airplane and you fly it. There is no objectives. There is no anything. You just take off, you fly, and you hope you don't end up face up in the dirt. In Brazil. In Brazil. Let me tell you, <laughs> thinking about the, uh, the paper airplane game here and uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's got the mind going about stuff like that, and I... Uh, I'm trying to imagine, you know. I'm sure it's fun for some people, but I know that those guys who built, like, train sets, yes. I know they have a killer time with stuff like this. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if you've ever seen the game Railway Empire. I or, have not, but I think I get the idea. Or even Train Simulator. Let me tell you about Train Simulator for a quick few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, Train Simulator. On the Steam store right now, you can try and purchase all the... It's not going to work, but... Well, maybe if you're rich, but... You can try and purchase all the uh, game plus all DLC... And I think that sucker's about three thousand dollars. No, 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 it might be more. It might be a double digit thousand dollars, like forty three thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah, it's it's pretty expensive. The reason for this is because train set builders, like if you're an actual collector of train sets, you have to pay at least a hundred dollars for each train set. So if you're collecting your train, you have to think about it like that. So you're playing a train game where the train sets, you know, are virtual now. I don't know if I trust it just as much since it's not physical. But if virtual stuff's up your alley, I mean, it's a lot more saving on space and things like that. But if you have $3,000, what? how do you not have enough space? I don't know. I, I think that's just me. What in the world? These simulator games are a little out of control. Farming simulator, too. Oh, man. I, I knew that this, this whole genre was starting to get a little ridiculous when I saw Goat Simulator. And I'm like, no. Goat Simulator, di different. Di well, well, it's terrible, but it's different. Now, the reason I say that like that is because Code Simulator has a DLC in a game I actually play called Payday 2. Now, the Code Simulator DLC in that game adds a shotgun. 
Shotgun's pretty good. Yeah, goat doesn't have a shotgun in the goat simulator. I don't know what it. I don't know. How how does the goat carry the shotgun in Payday? Oh, he's not in there. It's just it's just Goat Simulator DLC, four dollar DLC, I think. You get the shotgun, and then you get a mission where your mission is to heist goats. That's where the goats come in. So when you're heisting these goats out of a big old truck in the middle of DC, so you got a bunch of goats, and these things weigh a freaking ton. But it is hilarious the animations they've come up with because when you usually when you pick up a bag in Payday Two, it's kind of like uh, you just kind of drape it over your shoulder. Yeah. But when you're putting on the the when you pick up a goat, it, it latches onto your back and like its arms are over here, and then its legs kind of just like dangle like noodles. <laughs> Okay, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. And then it does have noodle body, so like when you're walking around, it's kind of like shaking around. <laughs> that's funny. It, it, it is. It is something. It is something, yeah. And okay. then I got a shotgun, so that was nice. The final point, and hopefully this is not the game that defines 2021, because if it does, ooh, things going to get dark real fast. Cyberpunk 2077. Mm-hmm. Now this thing, this uh, there's a lot of people not liking it, but oh my gosh, let me tell you, just freaking wait. <laughs> I mean, the game's good. Like, it's a really good game. Okay. We've got uh, John Wick guy, whatever his name is. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, he's cool. No, I, <laughs> I don't know why I forgot his name. I've, I've seen The Matrix before. So just because Keanu Reeves is actually in there and oh, is playing I mean, that's somebody. That's not made it, what made it good. But, okay. I mean, he's a cool guy, but like. You can't just stick a character in there and then just call the game good. Yeah. But uh, the gameplay functionality-wise is actually pretty good. When it works, it, it chooses to work. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, I'm playing on Xbox One right now. So overall, I have fun when the game is allowing me to play. <laughs> yes. Other than that, though, plot-wise, great game. I've only had spaghetti code happen, like, a few times. And mm -hmm. it, it's actually gotten... It's, it started to go less... Now, I think it's because they're putting out so many... Well, obviously, it's because they're putting out so many patches to like, fix the Oh, thing. this thing broke. Um, oh. <laughs> but when it when I, I played it on release, and so when I got into the prologue type deal, you're doing a heist, basically. You're talking to this guy. You get in this car. So I got in the car, and I seen the, the E3 footage, which was spectacular. And then I got inside the car, and I couldn't see anything inside the car because it was just a gray model. And as it slowly started rendering more and more... And the Play-Doh was basically shaping over time. And as the cutscene progressed, <laughs> the character actually became the character. But by the time the character was like physical and his lips finally adjusted to what he was actually saying, at that point, I got out of the car because this cutscene was over. That's hilarious. It is. It is. And I had fun with it, too. You know, like somebody else would look like, you know, you'd get a snob up there and he'd be like, what the heck is this? I'm just going to turn this game in so I could get my money back, you know? Yeah. It's a pretty fun game, and you know what? They've actually talked about CD Projekt Red is pretty cool. I've never played the... Well, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I played The Richard, but I couldn't get past the prologue because, you know, mm, I hate tutorials, and <laughs> thankfully, CD Projekt Red, not saying they learn from their mistakes or anything like that, but they would give you the option. They say when the game actually gets to the what would be the tutorial, you have the option to press A. Yes, I would like to play the tutorial, or B. No, I don't want to play the tutorial. Obviously, Mario doesn't do this. Uh, he's just like, you, you take what I give you, and then, then you, you play my game. This is mine. Yeah. <laughs> you figure it out. You have this button that does this. I'm not telling you. Forget that. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, you have games such as Ocarina of Time. And I believe I had like a, uh, a four, a four to 500 page. No, actually, I think it was more. It was almost 1,000 pages, Ocarina of Time, to walk you through the game. <sighs> Yeah. So anything else you'd like to talk about with video games before we cut things for you? Uh, well, I'd like to hear your thoughts about these newer consoles coming out. I know it's really hard to get your hands on the PS5, Xbox Series Especially X. if you wanted it in black. So I, the company that was releasing these PS5s that were made to look like PS2s, mm -hmm. they had, I think it was PS2s, it could have been PS3s or 4s, whatever. It's a PS. But it was a black version, and they were about to start shipping, but they actually ran out of units that they could sell. And then they started getting death threats. So they're like, you know what? No, nobody's getting any. So they just canceled. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so they just stopped me? Oh, okay. They just decided not to do it because okay. they were getting death threats. Well, yeah, I probably wouldn't want those either. I would not. Well, that's fair enough, you know. Yeah. Sucks. But I I'm interested in the Switch Pro. 
Switch Pro, let me tell you, if I'm able to actually hold what is essentially three inches more of my phone in in and wield 8K, that'd be pretty cool. I've actually been playing Duke Nukem. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It's, a, it's, uh, it's actually the game from the 64, Duke Nukem. So you can get this on Nintendo Switch right now. It's $5. Not, not that I'm advertising anything, but, you know, if you want to... Get a taste of 20 years ago. 30 years ago now. Dang, I'm old. Okay, um, just so you know, the um, Duke Nukem that you had on Nintendo 64 was not the first Duke Nukem. I assume That's why it was much. called Duke Nukem 64. But the original one was for PC. It was uh-huh. using the Doom engine. Ah! Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, let me tell you, this, this Duke Nukem, it is the 25th anniversary edition. Oh, man. That, the game is more than 25 years old now. Uh, but it is pretty cool on the Switch. You can actually play up to eight players, which is oh nice. Yeah, it's freaking sweet, dude. <laughs> so you can play without the eight players, and you can play cooperative like throughout the campaign, or you can play a Duke match, which is death match, and you you're fighting each other. Yeah. So you, the thing ha- and get this this game they got the old devs, the voice of Duke Nukem. And the creators of the music to actually come back and finish the levels that they didn't finish when they first created the game. Awesome. That's the kind of thing I like to see, actually. And they created more levels. Excellent. A new enemy type and added a new weapon with better sound effects and and, and it looks it, It's good. the game you remember, just more of it. On top of that, if you've ever played like Halo 2 Anniversary, it has the same kind of thing where you can switch between the old and oh, new yeah. graphics. So let me give you this. That game was actually made on 2.5D, mm-hmm. which is 2.5 dimensional, instead of actual yep. 3D, but it was advertised as real 3D. Mm-hmm. So when you play this game now, they actually did take the five minutes that it took to add the real 3D <laughs> instead of the 2.5D. And so now you can press a button and you switch between stickers and then 3d <laughs> yeah cool yeah and now you can see those babes in live 3d that's that's quite interesting <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh yeah i think that's pretty much all i got okay well there's, there's going to be a lot of gaming in the future i'm excited for all this stuff coming out i'm definitely going to have a lot of fun playing video games i will too So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on the things we talked about in today's podcast. Find Laney on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. Uh, For updates, keep an eye on at Elated Geek on Instagram or at Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. Or go to our website at elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Or, hey, just tell us what games you're playing. And if you've got new levels that you've built in Super Mario Maker 2, Go ahead and share them with us at shareadelatedgeek.com because I just got that game myself. And until next time, geek out.